Now, let's see. Oh, there's a name I want to tell you guys about. Ari Aster, man. People say, you know, everybody's talking about uh, Jordan Peele out there being the face of horror and you know, being the new guy out there scaring folks. And, you know, some people say, yeah, but let's not forget this other dude right here, Ari Aster, man. Ari Aster is the one that put out. Now, unlike other people, you know, some people put out horror to, to actually scare you, jolt you, thrill you. Ari Aster puts out horror movies to just confuse your ass. <laughs> His last movie did that to a lot of people. It was a very talked about film because his last film was the movie, you might have heard about this, Hereditary. <laughs> it's heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. I know my mom would be very touched and probably a little suspicious. And she said, get rid of that chick right there. <laughs> that daughter of yours. <laughs> um... He heard everybody out there saying, man, you know, it's you just don't make people feel good, man. You know, you just you know, you just you just make people just feel dirty after they watch your movies. You know, why don't you do you don't do you you've done two things already that really fucked up people's heads. Why don't you why don't you do something nice? And so at this point he said, you know what? I heard the people and I'm gonna I'm gonna think about what they said, probably even follow their advice. So he made something this time around. He he made something very bright. He made something very colorful, and he made something very cheerful, and still somehow managed to make it really f***ed up. <laughs> he's like, okay, he's at one point, like, he went, I can't do this. He's like, I got to be me. <laughs> you know, look, <laughs> four out of five ain't bad. Right? <laughs> you did it again. Yeah. Did I? <laughs> wow. You know, the sun is shining, everything is bright, people are happy singing and dancing, and still somehow it's all f***ed up. How did you do this, man? And the movie we're talking about right now is Midsummer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer, which people who haven't even seen the movie, this has kind of messed them up already. Let's go ahead and watch this trailer for Midsummer, and then we'll be back with our review. We only do this every 90 years. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this film here that you've been... Uh, you know, that you haven't heard about already, because a lot of people are talking about this and talking about how weird it is and uh, a few other things, like about how it's kind of uh, anti-horror in some ways and still succeeds at being a horror film. Uh, the biggest thing that I do admire about this, uh, about this movie right now, this is whether I like it or not, but I do admire it. And I admire it because it succeeds by going, in certain areas, at least as far as I'm concerned, it succeeds by going against all of the conventions of horror that we've been that we've been taught throughout the years in the genre. Uh, you already heard us say, and from many other reviews, how bright it is. I mean, most of this takes place in the bright, cheerful ass sunshine, man. I mean, you look up and the sun just got a smile on his face, you know? Yes, yes. Because it, it, when the sun's out, you feel like nothing bad can happen. All you, it makes you realize how many horror movies depend like a crutch on the darkness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they want to have things just jump out of nowhere and scare you. And here, whatever's going to scare you, it's not going to hide. No, it's not going to hide. And the sun don't go away. No. <laughs> you tell the sun, all right, you can go now. Like, no, nah, I'm still here. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it midnight? Yeah. Uh -huh. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. No, I got you. <laughs> I'll keep on doing your thing. I'm going to be here. <laughs> when you're going away, oh, in about six months, <laughs> it's, it, it is bright, man. It is not, it is, it is not like it's well lit. Mm -hmm. It is bright as fuck mm -hmm. in this movie. And beyond that, like I told you, it's colorful. I mean, it's it's when I it, it is very cheerful, man. Everybody's always dancing. They got ribbons and flowers in their hair. Everybody's every smiling. Day, every everybody's smiling. Every day is a feast. Mm -hmm. Everybody just drinking beer and they're just happy. You know, they 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 live in Hansel and Gretel houses. <laughs> you know, everywhere they go, the shit is like being at Epcot at Disney World, man. It, for a it, lot of it, if you never got to leave, <laughs> yeah, yeah, as if they wouldn't let you leave. But the thing is. The horror comes in in the discomfort of the film because now this, this director, that's what he relishes in, 
not just strictly hard, but just how uncomfortable he can make you feel. Mm. While all these people are laughing, dancing, and drinking beer all day, and eating all this wonderful food, and you know, and, and gardening and shit, every now and then you'll kind of get sucked into it, and it'll make you feel good. And then you just happen to look in the background, and it'll be like, Jesus, that's a deformed man back there. <laughs> You know, just staring at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it just, and really, and it's one of those things where you know how, now that's where horror comes in, because everybody's just doing that thing, and this dude just sitting up there just looking at you. And it's and then, for a fleeting moment, it's gone. So it's just kind of like, did I just fucking see what I think I saw? And it's not so much that, was that an illusion or a mirage? Because somebody points it out and goes, hey, what's with that right there? And somebody goes, oh, that, oh, yeah, it's this, 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 and there's an explanation for that. But those start to add up after a while. Like, oh, yeah. Like, even the paintings on the wall, they, nobody makes any mention to them, but you stop and look at some of them, and you're like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that, you know, the thing is, and plus, you go through there, and you, you'll do something that you don't know about the customs, and then you'll just piss, you just slightly piss one person off, and they just stare staring at your ass through the rest of the movie. <laughs> you know, it's like every time you eat, every time you take a shit, that one person's there always looking at you, and it's like, Jesus, man, let it go. But no, they don't because they want to make you uncomfortable. Even people, even people that like you, the moment that they like you, you know, they they will sit up there and they will stare at you all day. You know, this is this is something that's supposed to make you feel it's supposed to make you feel uh, uh, throughout the whole movie, it's supposed to, to make you feel unsettled by it. And also the feeling of isolation, even though you're here with these people that are having a great time, you out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. So if something goes down. There's no easy escape, and no one's gonna be no no one's nearby to help you out. What will horrify you the most is not even some of the things that are set up to scare you in this movie. Now I got no clips because they want to keep things as secret as possible, I guess. So I didn't get anything. I just had this trailer, but and I wish I could illustrate more. But they are setting up not for exactly the things that again, conventionally would scare you in a horror movie, Mm-mm. the things that scare you the most are the people that you are actually hanging with. These characters that you are with, Will Poulter and Jack Ryan and... Uh, Jack what? Rayner. Jack, Jack, I'm going to say Jack, Jack Ryan. Is Jack, is that name the dude from 24? Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's... Jack that's, Ryan. That's, that's, that's uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Harrison Ford. The Harrison Ford yeah. movies, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jack, Jack Rayner. Uh, what is her name again? Pugh? Uh, uh, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, these people that you, these are the, are the people that you're supposed to be relating to. These are the people that you're supposed to be hanging with. You're supposed to be them in the movie. And the thing is, is that you expect these characters when you see them to act like you, because there are moments now when they when they get to this village, because that's the story right here. Uh, you know, uh, you get what you think is going to be, they have a huge MacGuffin in here. They're pulling some Hitchcock type shit. You get a story about, as you saw this in the trailer, you know, you're getting a story about a couple that looks like they're having trouble on the verge of a breakup. Uh, he decides to go to Sweden. She finds out about it because he was going to do it without her. She decides to go too. And then that's when the real movie kicks in. Uh, and you spend a great chunk of this film on their story right there before anything really kicks off. Uh, there's also a backstory with her family and a murder slash suicide that happens. Now, all that is uh, good and well. They go to Sweden. They do a lot of mushrooms and whatnot. And, this, and you get kind of just, you get kind of caught up in the characters and their just ordinary day to day lives. Yeah, it's when the, they get to the middle of the movie, something just absolutely sickening happens. And Martin, and I was sitting in the movie, and when it happens, you should man. But look, we were the biggest stereotypes in the movie. We were the only two black dudes in that theater. <laughs> we're like, oh shit. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> we didn't give a. F- we did not. And the, I mean, granted, they gave us lots of free food and tons of free Swedish uh, cocktails. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was just like, God damn! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what the fuck? And then, and that was the first. That, yeah, that's right, the first one. <laughs> right after that, I'm like, oh, I'm glad, man. I'm glad that. I'm like, oh shit! People like looking at us like, but y'all shut the. F- and we're expecting the characters in the movie to act the same way as we are. And they do. They do. For an hour. <laughs> you know, right? Right after that, it, it's almost like, right after that, they just they just kind of go back to life as usual, you know? Well, there's a thing about that. But I, I'll, I'll bring it up later, but go ahead. No, I'm just, no. I'm just saying, you know, you expect the characters to be like you. And, and 
after after a while, they're just kind of like, really, after about an hour or so, I'm not lying, after an hour, they're just kind of like, they're like they, 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 well, I guess that's what they do around here. The people who do act with disgust in this movie, they're the weird ones. The people who, who are reacting like they should, like you know, like normal people, everybody. Oh, oh, the non-white couple? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the ones who are acting like us? Yeah. You better be glad we weren't at that festival. <laughs> Man, shit! That's f***ed up, dude! <laughs> Tradition Boy, my ass. Man, we would have been like, damn, y'all white folks f***ed <laughs> up around here, man. The the people who, you know, act quote unquote normal, they're the weird ones. Um, Even the people that we think are, are us, they're just kind of like, man, why don't y'all calm your ass down? Right. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you're embarrassing us. <laughs> there's, there's a point in the movie where if it's a traditional horror film, people, they this is where they would run. Oh, they sure. would hide in the woods, sure, and the natives would try to come after the, them. Because the, the tr- traditional horror film has its beats, and when you get to that beat, that's why they want everybody to scramble and get the audience to raise their blood pressure. Yep. And this movie is not interested in doing what a traditional horror movie does. Nope. And, the, and, and a lot of people are going to complain. They're going to be like, okay, that's really fucked up what just happened. Why are these people staying? For me in the movie... It makes total sense. This is the this is the movie where the white people actually have an excuse to stay where they are. Well, they they give everybody a reason, at least most of these characters uh, a reason to be there because they're students who want to study this, and, and so you you get that. There's like it, it's it's not one of those where this happened. Why aren't you leaving? No, they're 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 accepting it. Uh, a movie that this movie is most compared to is The Wicker Man. Yeah, but to me. I would compare it more to Get Out in as much as it is a situation where somebody comes into something that seems normal and starts to get weird Mm -hmm. and their sense of self-preservation doesn't kick on right away because they realize, hey, I'm out of my element and I need to be polite. That's what I really love about the movie, man, is that it gets to a point where it's not even about the horror anymore. The horror, the horror happens midway through the film uh you know there's a point where you see some things in the movie and those images for a while they look like you know they are going they're, they're going to uh they're going to hunt you mm-hmm. they will man there's some things in here that are just really just messed up in images and visuals but that's halfway through the movie man uh even then, the you know the horror is in the gore. It's not so much in the scares. It's just kind of like, wow, this is some really insane body horror that's going on right here. Uh, and so you're not kind of even scared at that moment. What happens with this movie is that they put you the effect the effectiveness of it. If it works for you, and it's not going to work for everybody, I get that. But if it does work for you, it's probably going to be that the movie keeps you in a constant state of what the f- is mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Always, you know, Mm -hmm. there's always uh, chaos behind the calm. You know, even when these other people are doing crazy shit, these characters are arguing amongst themselves. There's always something chaotic going on. They're arguing about their college thesis, you know. They're they're, they're arguing about their relationships. Uh, People are on mushrooms and they're freaking the f*** out on things, man. You always are at this point where it's like, okay, I'm not really scared. I'm uncomfortable in a really good way. I'm freaked out a little bit, but I really want to know what's happening next, oh, man, yeah. because it always is... It, it, it's, this movie keeps... The momentum in it, it, it relies in the unpredictability of it. Absolutely. Ari Aster, uh, this director, he that's that's what he thrives in, in making people just feel very, very uncomfortable. Um, you know, uh, because I think he... And I like that because I think it challenges the audience. Before we even get to this village, as I said, you know, this breakup is happening between Danny and Christian, mm-hmm. Jack Jack Rayner's character. And you go back and forth on, okay, is this guy just an asshole? Uh, is this chick just clingy and whiny? Because I'm going to tell you something, man. Uh, you know, they set it up because they put you in, a un, in the middle of an uncomfortable situation. Uh, he's gonna break up with this girl, but God damn it, her family just died. Shit, I yeah. can't do nothing. So, you yeah. know, you and you and 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 you're thinking like at one point, like okay, this guy didn't tell he was going to Sweden. Is he the asshole in this situation? But I gotta tell you, man, and and they again, this is the challenge for the audience. Uh, I think Danny is annoying as. She is. I, I I think she before any of this stuff was happening, she be, was already before things went down. She was. She. But it's one of those things. She's she's whiny, but then shit goes down. You go like, oh well. But, but see, that's where the challenge comes in. Is like, well, damn. Do I, need, do I need to feel bad for this chick just because you know she lost her family just now? She's going through something. But you know, and I'm gonna tell you, I came to the conclusion like, no, nah, 
I mean, I don't like her. But some people are just like, I don't, I don't know how to feel about this because some people's sympathies are kicked in by the film. Yeah, I, my, she had my sympathies. I just thought it, Jack it was the wrong person for her. Before you're even challenged on any of the other weird, weird things in the movie, you're challenged on these characters. At the same time, the movie's really funny, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the thing. No. You remember how much we were cracking up watching the oh, movie? Oh, yeah. No, I, either these characters are meant to be funny or something so insane is happening that you're just kind of laughing out of nervousness. Mm -hmm. I think this, that this is an atmosphere that where you might see there's long scenes of nothing going on. Uh, Ari Aster, the director, he wants you to settle in this environment with the culture that he introduces. And I, want, I think he takes his time because he wants you to feel like, okay, you know what? There were things going on. The weird stuff was happening in the normal setting. Mm -hmm. You get here, and all these people are nice. Yeah, they're very welcoming. You're partying with these people, even though you see weird things in the background. And you know, you you really do at moment put your guard down, and then that's when something else is introduced, and then you're kind of jolted back into this weirdness. I had a moment of go of thinking to myself, you know, it might be fun to check out something like this. Yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, I was. I ain't gonna do that shit, <laughs> and, I'm, now. and I'm gonna get the f out of here as soon as I can. But hey, you know if that's your choice, and y'all ain't, ain't breaking no rules or laws, I, yeah. I'd like to see it. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's it, up as it is. Yeah, it's up. It'd be, it'd be fun to watch. Like yo, if I could go for a day and just kind of observe that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if y'all would let me leave right, right. when the <laughs> is done, like if the if the meter's still running on the Uber or whatever, well, Ubers don't have meters, but. <laughs> yeah. But uh, maybe they do in Sweden. You don't know. If the bus is still there. My ride is still there. Y'all let me run the f out. I'm, I'm with you. Morbid. My morbid curiosity mm -hmm. kicked in. And I think that's another thing with the movie that gets people. It's like, sure. okay, you're cringing at this. You, you're repulsed at this. But it's kind of like if you're in an environment where something is allowed to happen and there's no repercussions uh -huh. at all, how much would you actually stand there and look? Right. I have a friend and he, the one guy who doesn't like Get Out because he's like, man, I would have left at this point. Who the f is this dude? <laughs> Who the fuck is this? Give me, give me his name right give now. Me his name later. I'm gonna recreate Get Out for him and see what the fuck he does. But, but, he, but his his point was, oh, but when this happened, I would have left. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't, because so much of that movie is look, you with your girlfriend, her parents, you're trying to be polite. Weird shit is happening, but you're trying to just work within your parameters and you're not looking to just bolt right away because you're gonna look like a jackass if it's if it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And then by the time you, you know, you very logically figure out, oh, shit, I'm in danger. It's kind of too late already. You know what? It, his, it's been too late for a while. His ass would be the first one to die. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he always that guy in an action movie looking at people taking know, hostage in a bank. Stupid. Yeah, you know, people who he people who held hostage in a bank. Man, I would have got up and took that gun. I mean, you would have. <laughs> shut the f*** up, man. <laughs> shit, I wish Michael Myers come look at me in my goddamn face. Oh, yeah, I wish he would, too. <laughs> Because you die. <laughs> atmosphere is very cool because this director knows how to play with atmosphere. I mean, he, nothing nothing has to jump out at you. Nothing has to be blatant. Nothing has to be bold. This is the little subtleties in there. You already mentioned, like, the pictures. You know, all these pictures that are everywhere. Some of them look innocent, and then you look at some, and you'll be looking, you'll be walking by, like, what the f***? <laughs> what are they doing that bear? <laughs> yeah, yeah you almost go like, well, that must be what something they they did way back in the day. Yeah, I'm sure they don't they don't do that now. The village, you'll be walking and you'll see something, you'll be like, what the hell is that? And they'll be like, oh, don't worry about that. Like, what you mean, don't worry about that? <laughs> there is a lot that's done here uh, with the just the lighting and certain things that are great. Great mood here. But also, there are certain things that he does. He works with camera angles a lot. I've seen his director do this. You know, uh, we've already seen him do that before. Uh, you know, he had, he would actually make elements a part of the story so that he can visually play with that. Like in Hereditary, the, uh, the wife builds miniatures. And you see certain parts of the movie where, you know, it opens up with people actually in a miniature house. You see these people... Uh, you know, you see them actually interacting with the miniature house. You know, it's become, a, it's interwoven into the story. He does that here. He chooses to like sometimes do these overhead shots mm -hmm. where people are walking from another room. Uh, he'll do the, these, again, adding to this, the the disorienting feel of, uh, you know, oh, right here. These oh, yeah. shots are amazing, man. It's, that's a transition too. That's not only a like cool angle, that's a transition from uh, we're in the bedroom or the living room to going to a plane, a bathroom on a plane, mm -hmm. man. You know, he'll do things where when they uh, you know, when they arrive to this village, 
uh, you know, you see like the sign going upside down, it, like like right there, like again, disorienting shots, adding to the mood. You know, the sign is hanging upside down and you do this thing where the camera turns itself around. You know, I really admire that this guy has thought about every creative process in every area of this film. I'm not one <laughs> to look down on people and say, you know, your opinion is your opinion, but right here, you just don't understand. You know, go go watch Halloween or some shit. Don't watch this. <laughs> if this is not your thing, you want something straightforward, it's not going to be your, 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 your type of film. I mean, not everybody liked Hereditary. Yeah, I didn't like it at all. Yeah, and you know, and I, and I, uh, and I did. I I enjoyed Hereditary, man. And I have to say that looking at Hereditary and another film that he did, that does bring me to a small complaint about the film. What, and what, I, what was the other film? And I can't even say that I, that is really a complaint about this film. It's more of a cautionary uh, statement at the moment, and that I hope that this director can. Kind of just di- you know uh, divert his path a little bit down the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ari Aster, you know, with uh, well, he did Hereditary. Hereditary. He has these same themes in his movie: comfortable situations and family, families that are dealing with grief. Sometimes, uh, I-, I think so far, all of these have dealt with death in the family of some sort, and that's Hereditary. But another one that he did, and again, another one that I I, I absolutely love, is one of my favorite short films of all time. And you did not like it. In fact, you looked at me like I was. You looked at me like I violated you, man. <laughs> I might as well have raped you, Martin, when I gave you this. I'm like, what you give me this shit for to watch? Uh, it was. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna even tell you what it is. I'm just gonna show it to you. All right. What you wrote? Oh. <laughs> is it because you made me sound disgusting and made me ashamed to be your son? You know, this is still to this day for me the craziest shit that he's ever done. <laughs> it's a movie called The Strange Things About the The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. It's a it's a <laughs> it's a it's a short film. It's about twenty three minutes long. That's what makes it that's what makes it more disturbing to me is that it's twenty three minutes long. As 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 five or six minutes, okay. It's 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 good. You got your point across. But the fact that he took it that far. I love that he took it that. That man, Martin, this story needed to be told. <laughs> Martin's like, I'm done. I'm still like, hey man, top me off a little bit more. <laughs> Give me some of that Johnsons right, right there. You, you haven't had kids yet. Yeah. Can't wait till that's you. <laughs> that, that that dad even looked. Shit, kinda I kind of look like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that he can branch out from telling these same themes because that is some people. And I don't want to hear that shit. Oh, you know, he's an auteur. He does the same thing. I, you know, I never buy that auteur that auteur theory for people that just kind of do the same thing over and sure, over again. Sure. Uh, tonally, sure, I can take that, but just repeating the same themes over and over again, I'm like, all right, you know, uh, if, but then again, if you continue to make good things, then what can I say? And that's why I look at this and I say, you know what? Until he does make something where it diverts from those themes and is bad, art's great. Uh, this, for me, is a straight-up full price. This, is, this movie fulfills everything I want from a horror movie and never get. Matter of fact, it fulfills a, a lot of what I want from just the movies that have come out in 2019 and I haven't got. This is inspired. Unlike so many movies like this or just even horror movies, you don't know what's going to happen next. And that's so much the thrill of it. This, for me, it's, it is it, not only is a full price, it's a high full price. It was bordering on a better than sex. It's one of my favorite movies of this yeah, year. Yeah, no, I love this film, man. Yeah. I, no, I, and I, matter of fact, <laughs> watching it with you was one of my be- favorite experiences. No, I had a good year. time with you too, <laughs> No, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, no. normally we trying to like keep our opinions to ourselves. I'm like, shit. Yeah, man. You see this? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, man. Sometimes Martin and I go to movies and we sit by each other, especially if it's in that kind of atmosphere. Mm. This is why I love this man right here, man. <laughs> I, I didn't, like this. This is seeing this with you was one that, like people like each other. Jesus, man. No, but seeing this with you was like really one of my movie going highlights of the year too. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that kind of helped that we were drunk too. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they it, gave it us hurts none. <laughs> I mean, they, they treated us really well, but but all, but. With me not liking Hereditary, I thought, well, it's nice that I'm eating their food and drinking their booze. I got to figure out a way to say something nice about whatever bullshit they yeah, throw us. Yeah. And I was like, oh, holy shit. I was not prepared for how much I was going to love this movie. Yeah. No, I I, uh, I had a, an amazing time with this. And I questioned. I really do question myself. Had they not? Because when we got there, they had, a, they had a menu. And they had a lot of alcohol. And a lot of food on there, mm-hmm. a lot of desserts, and that shit was unlimited. They said you get whatever you like. Mm-hmm. I even said, man, I, I was looking at two drinks, and the dude who he, was, he got tired of waiting me like, man, I'm gonna bring you both up. Shit. 
<laughs> get your ass fucked up tonight. And didn't you get a pizza and nachos? <laughs> you were ordering so many entrees. I was like, come on, brother. No, <laughs> no, 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 no play into the stereotype. <laughs> I ordered chicken and watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this video to the end. On your way out, just do me one more favor. Hit that subscribe button. And also, check out our main site, doubletoasted.com. Over there, you'll find the long version of this video, uncensored, unedited, along with the live streams that we do almost every night of the week. Check out our store, dtmerch.com. Get some stuff over there. And stay... <laughs>